Hi friends! Kaylee with Kaylee's Canvases here. Um, I am going to be showing you how to paint um, an easy beach scene on this surfboard. Uh, but if you're looking to paint too, you could do this on any um, on any type of um, on any type of surface. You don't have to you don't have to just do it on a surfboard. You could do it on a canvas, on an old piece of scrap wood. Um, really, however you want to do it is fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of uh, do like a beach, like an easy beach scene, like I said. So it'll be kind of sandy with like the sun and the ocean in the background, or with the sky and the ocean in the background. And then I'll do like a palm tree and some flowers. All right, so I'm just going to start. Um, I've got a few different colors. I've got um, a kind of like, I think it's called, let's see, it's called uh, turquoise and laguna. Uh, Laguna is the lighter color and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start at the top and just paint the sky and I'll mix in I started by painting the surfboard white uh, so that way it would um, the colors would be more vibrant on it because the surfboard was kind of like a wood color um, but your canvas will prop most likely be white but if you're painting on an old piece of scrap wood or something you're definitely gonna want uh, to paint your to paint your uh, wood or whatever you're painting on white before you do this so that way it shows up a little bit better all right so I am just going through I'm not gonna go down super far I'm just going to um, and I'm gonna try to get more of that light bluish green the Laguna color that I got I'm gonna try to get that in there um, but this is gonna give the impression of the sky and the ocean kind of all in one and I'll and I'll blend in some white and tan to make it look like sand. All right, and this is just something fun uh, that you can you can paint, like I said, on anything. And as you know, I usually just put my paint on a paper plate. I don't like to be wasteful, so I use the same paper plate over and over again. Don't think that when you paint, or if you want to do any type of artsy stuff, don't think that you have to be some type of fancy artist who uses all sorts of expensive stuff. You can literally do this with just cheap uh, craft materials. All right, um, getting, oops, I apologize. Getting my brush a little bit wet here because it started to dry out a little. So I'm gonna actually mix in just a little bit of white. All right, so it kind of gives it like a, um, you know, an above the, like an at the horizon kind of look to it, kind of a soft, misty look. All right, and and if it's too white, like I think I might have gotten just a little too much white in there, I'll just add a little bit of more of that Laguna. All right, so now we got kind of like a soft, misty look going on. I'm gonna rinse my brush a little bit more. Kayla says, hey, I'm not home, but I'll do this with the replay. Awesome, Kayla. I can't wait. If you do it, definitely share it. Um, Kayla always shares everything she does with me. I love seeing her finished products because she loves to paint, and that's super exciting. Um, so if you are hopping on and watching this with me, you definitely, um, if you don't have time to paint it now, save this to your uh, Facebook page, or if you're watching it on YouTube, uh, save it to your save videos so that way you can watch it later. You don't want it to get lost. Sometimes we go back looking for videos that we started watching or whatever. And we have a hard time finding them. At least I do. So that's why I always recommend just share this to your page if you're on Facebook or save it to your videos if you're on YouTube. And if you are on YouTube, I would love it if you uh, maybe just took a little bit of time to uh, hit the subscribe button. And so that way you can be notified of everything on my channel. All right, so I'm starting with the sand, and I'm going to just do a little bit of tan. I am I got my brush wet because it was kind of a little bit dry, and um, I'm just blending some white and tan together. I don't want this to be a dark tan. I want it to be a light tan because a lot of times when you're at the beach, um, the sand is can be almost white sometimes, depending on what kind of beach you're at. So I am... Because I'm painting on wood, my brush is getting a little bit dry pretty quickly, so I gotta keep dabbing it in the water here. Canvas holds uh, the moisture a little bit better than wood does. 
Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna keep going down with this. So, and I'm just gonna do it until I get enough sand and I'm probably gonna go most of the way down and then I'll just paint the bottom kind of black to give the illusion that it's kind of like close up and you know, the sun is so bright that you can, you know, everything in front is looking kind of dark. Okay, and as I go farther down, I can maybe get the sand a little bit more tan. You don't have to do a lot. Don't You don't need to go crazy. Um, but we'll just go down. And it kind of has like this messy, faded look here. That's exactly what I'm going for. Uh, so I'm going for that kind of misty look. This is going to be far off in the distance. You'll see we're going to paint a palm tree coming up and some flowers down here. Uh, and that'll just make it look like... Um, the ocean and the skyline at all. It's just far off in the distance and it's kind of all blending together. Okay. All right, so we're down and, it, and because I'm painting on wood, this is drying really quick. Um, and if you're doing this, um, I've just got like a really big brush uh, so I can just do it really quickly. Um, so if you do paint on wood, you might wanna get a big brush so that way it, it dries, because it dries really quickly. Okay, so I'm just rinsing off my brush a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfectly clean. Um, and then I'm going to add in that black down here on the bottom. So the background, very quick and simple. I kind of have a little bit of edge of white spot there I didn't want. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take my black using that same big brush and I'm just going to um, just kind of do a little bit of it doesn't even matter how you do it this is literally just the ground and maybe some grass so it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm just gonna paint this black okay I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait for warm weather. It is May and it is still chilly outside here in New York anyways. All right. I don't like it. I like I like fun warm weather. Okay. So if I wanted to, I could even just do like little, little things up to give the impression of grass. And I might do that. All right, but I'm even going, I'm going, this is where I'm going to start my uh, palm tree. So you can see it kind of gives the illusion of maybe some, some beach grass, some saw grass. All right, but that's not super important. Or if you wanted to leave it, it could just be like a little mound of sand or something. But we're just doing black, um, and it might look a little weird right now, um, but we're gonna put some colorful things down here. So it's not gonna be, um, it's not, you know, the black is not gonna be the focus in this. We're gonna have a nice palm tree going up, and we're gonna have some pretty flowers down here. All right, so I'm just rinsing out my brush because I'm going to put this one away because I definitely don't need this big brush anymore. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, a smaller flat brush. All right, because I'm going to want to get that palm tree in here. Okay, just getting a little bit wet and I'm going to go in. i got to get some more black paint. All right, and just like on the other surfboard that we did, we're just going to make a line uh, for where we want our palm tree. Let's see. And we're just going to, we're just gonna come down with it. Remember, this is just a guide. This is not, you know, this is not the end all be all. It's just a general guide of where we want our palm tree to be. All right, so once we get that in, we can start our little triangles for the palm tree. 
All right, if you are hopping on, I would love for you to say hi and just let me know uh, that you're watching or whether or not you're gonna paint this with me or paint it later. I would love to know. All right, so we are just going to do small little triangle shape. All right, and we're gonna go down and kind of do one on top of another. All right, it's pulling a little bit of the white and tan because it's not 100% dry. It's okay. If you want to, you can blow dry your surface. Alright, so I'm just getting these tri these kind of triangle shapes in. And remember what I had told you before is that palm trees do have like a little bit of a rough bark to them. Uh, everybody thinks that they're literally like perfect little triangles. It's actually a little bit more rough than people think. All right, and so as we're going down, we're gonna get a little bit thicker with our triangles. We don't wanna go too crazy thick. All right, um, but we do wanna make it slightly bigger because the base of most trees are usually bigger at the bottom than they are at the top. Okay. All right, so we're just, we're almost done with this. And so this is why it's so quick and easy is, um, it's just because nature is so imperfect and we're giving it the illusion that the beach is far away, so we don't have to be super perfect with that either. Um, but because like the pine, like I said, the palm trees are so imperfect um, that it just, it makes it, it makes it kind of easy. Okay, so I've got the basic shape of a of the palm tree, uh, whatever you call it, the the base of the palm tree. Okay, if you think anything's uneven, just go ahead and and even it out a little. All right, and even if I have little streaks of white in here, it's okay, because we're gonna add some little streaks of white later. Okay, and now I don't know if anybody remembers. Um, let's see, Janice says, hello, I love watching you paint. You do absolutely beautiful things. Oh, Janice, you said you're not an artist, but you should definitely try to paint. If you like to paint, you should definitely try to paint. Um, you know, most people, I will say, whenever I do like a paint party, um, and here guys, so the top of the palm tree, remember, is kind of ragged. It's kind of got those, or it's really rough. It's just got those little rough edges that kind of, I don't even know what it is. Just little rough pieces of bark. But anytime I ever do a paint party, like people are really hard on themselves and they're like, oh, this looks horrible as they're doing it. So my rule of thumb is just wait until you're done um, because it usually almost always pulls together. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. You can always let it dry, come back to it and repaint it. Um, but I always recommend, my, my rule of thumb is don't critique your work until you're done with it. Okay, so we will do, we'll do the palms coming out of the top. And I'm gonna use, um, I'm actually gonna still use my flat brush because this is a much bigger surface than a canvas that I normally work on. Normally I would just do it with a fine liner brush, but I'm gonna use my flat brush because it'll give me a little bit thicker lines and it'll just, it'll help me a little bit. But I am going to do um, some, I'm gonna do some green with this. Uh, so I will go in with just a regular green. This says real green. Um, all right, and I will put some black into it too, but right now I'm just getting the green, okay? So let's see, we just want to come up and over. All right, so it almost kind of looks like a mountain or a frisbee. Um, not a frisbee, what's those things? I forget what they are that the, I remember learning about from Australia or something. But anyways, they come back to you. I forget what the heck they're called. All right, but we're just making just a general shape, and if we're pulling in some black, that's okay because 
we definitely are going to be putting some black in there anyways. So All right, and don't worry about it looking super perfect right now. Remember what I told you that nature is not perfect. Okay, and then we'll just do one that's coming down like that. All right, and now we'll add in the blades. If you even want to put just a dab of black on your brush, I have like the smallest uh, boomerang. Thank you, Kayla. That's what I was thinking of. I don't know why I had a brain fart on that one. Um, but anyways, yeah, it kind of had a boomerang shape to it. Anyways, um, so I'm doing, I'm doing the palms in green, but I've just got like the tiniest bit of black on the edge of my brush. Um, and that's just to um, hopefully maybe add a little bit of black or darken up the color a little bit. And if it's not enough, you can always add a little bit more, but it's always easier to start with less and add more. All right, and the palms, you know, especially the ones that are up in the air, they kind of, they don't start off like all down like this. They go up a little bit because they're, they're more taut at the, at the base of the palm. And then they get a little bit more loose at the end. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just keep doing that until I get as many palms as I think look good with it. And there's all sorts of different palm trees. So like palms can look different depending on uh, what kind of palm tree it is. Like I see ones that are, look more like fans and some that look more like really long thin ones. So there's all sorts of palm trees. So don't feel like your palm trees have to look exactly like mine. And everybody loves different kinds of palm trees. Okay, so I'm just making these go down. Just make them look like they're falling with gravity. Again, depending on which kind you're doing. Okay, now we'll do this one. Okay, and with these kind of palms that I'm doing, they get a little bit closer together as they get down to the base. A little bit more droopy. Okay, and as you can see, I've blended in some black with this. Um, and if you, you know, like I said, you can always add in some more black. It's easier to add it in um, than it is to take it away. So if, if, you know, don't feel like you need to put a whole bunch in at first. If you want to just do them black, you could do that too. Um, but I don't want to do it all black. I want it to look a little bit more realistic than some of the silhouette paintings because this is more daytime. The last, uh, surfboard I did was kind of more of a nighttime sunset feel. So that's why it definitely had more of an all black silhouette. Okay, and I might even need to add in a little bit more palm somewhere, maybe down here. So painting sometimes can be a little scary and intimidating for people, but don't let it intimidate you. 
um, you know, as long as you're having fun um, and relaxing while you're doing it, that's what's really important. I feel like there needs to be something right up here. And again, you can add as many or as little as you want. It does not have to look exactly like mine. But you definitely want to make them all different sizes and shapes. that's looking pretty good all right so I actually might just to give it a little bit more realistic look I'm gonna mix a little bit of that green and tan together just to kind of give um, a little bit of um, depth to this palm tree all right and if you think you've got too much color on it you can always go back over with the black and kind of tone it down if you want. All right, but you want to think about too when you're do whenever you're doing any type of painting, you want to think about which way the light might be shining in or reflecting from, um, you know, because so I'm gonna want most of my light kind of coming in from this way, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black and kind of. Mute that out so that way it looks like the sun is hitting more on this side than the, the left side. All right, you don't want to just make everything just one big solid flat color because that just that just makes it flat and not as realistic. Okay. All right, it might be a little bit darker up at the top because it's got the palms to cover a little bit of the sunlight. And then I'll just add just a little bit here. And again, it's kind of going to be a little crooked and choppy because that part is usually pretty rough on the tree. Okay. Let's see. So next I'm going to do some flowers and some leafy, uh, like leaves that go along with the with the flowers. Um, I think I will use a little bit slightly bigger brush for this just so I can make some bigger leaves. Okay. And I'm gonna want to do white as a base because I've got that um, because I've got the black here um, it might the white the green might be slightly transparent. Alright so Let's see, we can do, I will actually, maybe I'll start off with, I'll do the leaves after and I'll start off with, I'll do the leaves after and I'll start off with the flowers. So I can make, actually, I'm going to put this brush down for a minute. I'm going to do uh, the fine liner brush so that way it gives me uh, better detail. So I'm going to do the general shape of the flower and I'm starting off with white. All right, and that's because I can um, it'll give me a brighter bolder color. All right. So we are going to make I forget what they're called, but they're more of a tropical flower. And you'll see them sometimes on a lot of like tropical clothing or bathing suits. I, I really I forget what they're called. All right, but you're going to do um, kind of like an upside down teardrop shape. And it's going to, and we're just going to do a few of these and we're going to do a smaller one inside of it. Okay. We'll just kind of connect them. Well, I'm leaving a little bit of a gap. I don't want. I don't want to connect them because I this is going to kind of be a little bit more 
a little realistic, but a little more whimsical. This is a little bit more fun down here. Yeah, sorry if my hand is blocking. Just trying to stabilize my hand. Alright, so... Okay, and we're just, we're going to do maybe five petals. Right, and then we'll fill it in in a sec. Right, but we're just, we're not, we don't have to do like a super bold, um, you know, super, we don't have to make sure it's completely covered the, with the white. As I'm filling it in, you want it to be kind of a thin layer of white so it dries quickly because we don't want to have, um, we don't want it to be too wet. We, we just want it to dry quickly so that way we can get um, the bright color on top of it. And if ever you get any paint on something that you don't want it to be there, just go in and use a baby wipe uh, to, to get it up. It'll Baby wipes work great for getting up paint that's unwanted. Alright, so I'm just quickly filling this in with a thin layer of white paint. And if you are just coming on watching this, I would love it if you um, would just, you know, follow along and, uh, and maybe paint this later on your own and then share it with me. And if you're watching on YouTube, definitely give this video a like if you like it. And, um, and you can even share this with me too if you want to. You could email it to kayleescanvases at yahoo.com both with a K. My email will be in the description on YouTube. Right, but I am trying to grow my viewership. So if you like this kind of stuff, share it with somebody else who you think would like this kind of stuff. You know, I don't want you to just to share it with just anybody because not everybody appreciates art. Right, so I'm just filling this in. Okay, and we'll do a couple more of these. We'll probably do three different flowers. Okay, and we will probably blow dry this. So even though it's on wood and it's probably gonna dry pretty quickly, I'm gonna blow dry it because um, I, I want to make sure that the white is dry before I add in the other colors or else it's going to end up like my, if I do, you know, whatever color it's going to, like if I do red, it's going to make it look pink, which is okay. It really all depends on what kind of color you're going for. But I've got some bright colors. I think I'm going to do a yellow, like an orangish yellow, and I have like a, I have a red color, um, kind of like, it's called cherry cherry cobbler. Um, I kind of like it because it's kind of a deep red. Um, not bright red, it's more of a deep red. So, alright, so let's see. We'll... And this one we're probably only going to get half a flower in, which is okay too. And we'll add the stamen of the flower in a little bit. Okay, so we're just getting general shapes in here, and then we're going to fill it in. Remember, it's, it's a teardrop shape, not fully connected at the bottom. 
and then like a smaller one inside. Almost kind of looks like half a flip-flop or a shoe or something. And we're just filling this in with a thin layer of white. So that way our colors look a little bit more bold. All right, and we'll just do one more flower and then we'll add in some leaves. All right, I'll probably do just a smaller flower here. I love painting, it's so relaxing. And I love seeing the final result. And each time you paint, you get better and better too. So, you know, don't uh, don't ever stop painting. If you're not good, uh, or if you think you're not good, that's all the more reason to paint because you get better and better the more you practice. Just like anything. And if you love painting with me, I do have an event coming up soon uh, called Take Me to Paris Virtual Paint Party. Um, so I'm really excited about that one. Um, it is a paid event, uh, so but it's it's only it's ten dollars per person, and uh, families for uh, fifteen dollars for a family. So let's say you have four people in your family. You could just pay the extra five bucks to to do your whole, you know, your whole family. Or even if you wanted to get a group of girls over at your house, um, that would be really fun. So I am excited about that. So that's coming up soon. That will, I'll be sharing that uh, event soon. And you can purchase tickets for that right on my website. So if you go to Kayleescanvases.com, both with a K... Um, and you can go to uh, virtual events in my collections. You go to virtual events and then you'll see uh, the virtual event there. So the only ones I usually put on my website are the paid ones. Um, most everything else that I do for free, I just do a video for it right here on Facebook or on YouTube or something. If you have any questions about it or any type of art, feel free to reach out to me. Um, sometimes people get nervous to ask questions about art, but honestly, I want to know how I can help you become better at art. Um, you know, whether it's painting or drawing or whatever you're interested in, because I do, as most people know, I do both. Um, and I would love to be able to help you uh, succeed with that. So... Don't be afraid to reach out to me. All right, so we got some flowers here and I'll probably, I don't know why I rinsed my brush because I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do some petals as well. Uh, or some leaves, I mean. So I'm just going to draw in a general shape for leaves. And just general, just a general shape. Put one there. All right, and you can make your leaves any shape you want to. We could get more detailed if we want to, wanted to with this, but I just want to leave it kind of simple. Alright, and let's see, maybe we'll have one, we can add just a little bitty part for a leaf in here. Okay, and I am going to want to uh, do a, 
quick little line for a the stamen of each flower. All right, so let's see. You're literally just going to take your brush. You don't want it to be too thick. And you're just going to go out and kind of curve it a little bit. Right. So you're just going to go out and curve it a little bit. It might be a little thicker at the base. And that's okay. Most things, like for trees or um, flowers, it's always usually a little thicker at the base. And we will do same thing over here. This is a bigger flower, so maybe a little bit bigger. And we will add some color to these as well, along with maybe just some fun little dots. All right, let's get a leaf over here. All right, I know it might seem weird that I'm doing everything in white right now, but like I said, some colors can be really transparent and you don't want it to show like, you know, you'll have half of it, you know, green and then half of it a darker green. Um, this will help give it an even color to it where you won't see the line from anything. All right, so I am going to dry this real quick. All right, because I like I told you before, I definitely want I definitely want my um, white to be dry before I go in with those darker colors. Um, so I am going to dry this, and then we'll we'll actually also add some white highlights up on the tree as well. But we'll do all the highlights at the very end. So I'm just drying this so I can get the colors on. And then we'll add the highlights to the flower and the palm tree. If you are just hopping on, we're just painting a, a fun little beach scene on this surfboard. You can do this on any surface. You can do this on a canvas. You can do this on an old scrap piece of wood, on a piece of slate, anything. All right, and I'm pretty much dry there. So I am going to decide which colors I want where. I think I'll do yellow here, maybe yellow here, and then we'll get this one to be kind of that reddish purple. I might have to grab purple as well. All right, but I'm just going to, so I've got this apricot color. This is just craft paint. Um, and really this is whenever you're learning, like I said, you don't need to go in with anything expensive. Um, so I'm just using apple barrel. This is apricot. Um, I like it because it's just a fun, happy, yellowish orange color. All right, so I'm just gonna put it on my plate. And I'll, I, I'm gonna wanna use a clean brush, all right? So make sure your brush is clean. You don't want it to have any dark colors in it. Um, I might, let's see what brush should I use. You can use any brush, but I would, uh, like any small brush. It could be fine liner or it could be a flat brush. I'm gonna go in with a flat brush because I'm doing it on slightly, a surfboard that's slightly bigger than a small canvas. So I definitely wanna give it, um, it's got some bigger flowers, so. I want it to be a little easier, so I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to go around and trace this general shape. And I love how bright and happy this, this yellowish orange color is. And I'm just following these lines, just coloring it, pretty much. Right, and it's okay if I don't cover up all the white. It kind of will add in some natural highlights. But I probably will go in and do a second layer of the yellow uh, when I'm done, uh, only because this color is a little transparent and I can see like all the little lines and everything. But I really do love this color. 
and we'll do the stamen the same color as well. So I'm just going to go in and just follow that. Right, and then I'll do this one down here. And we're just filling in that white with whatever color you choose. You can choose teal, you can choose green, but I'm not going to do green because we're going to do the leaves green. Uh, you can choose pink, purple, blue, whatever color you want these leaves to be. Um, go for it. These leaves are, or these uh, flowers, I meant to say flowers actually, whatever color you want to paint these flowers. I just realized I said leaves. Um, but these flowers are so and they're so fun to do that even if you wanted to just do the flowers on a piece of wood or a canvas or something without um, without the uh, the background, just to practice your flowers or just to decorate something, that would be fun too. Alright, so just going in and just coloring all this in. Oops, I made a mistake. That was my leaf. Let me grab a baby wipe. So you guys can see how easy this is to clean up. See, I made a mistake. So, no biggie. And just go in and just wipe it off. I don't need to be super thorough with this because um, the green will cover the yellow. Okay. All right, so I will go in with another layer of this yellow, but I'm going to hold off for now. I'm going to let that dry first because you always, if you ever you're going to do a second layer of color, you definitely want to um, get in, uh, you want to let it dry first or else it's just going to kind of wipe off what you have. Just going to grab a little bit of purple. And I'm going to mix it with that red that I was telling you about. So I got the Cherry Cobbler. Um, it's a nice kind of purplish red color. Um, and I don't need a lot. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of purple. Okay. So again, using this other brush, same paintbrush, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to follow these lines. You can see it adds a nice color. The purple and the red together makes a nice color. Just filling this in nice and easy. And again, this is a little streaky, so because um, it's kind of transparent, so we will go over that uh, again. All right, so I'm just filling that in. Oops. Did a little bit too much on my paintbrush. All right, so all my flat petals, this paint actually here is drying pretty quickly, so that's why I was able to go in really quick with a, another layer. Let's see. Okay. And I'm just again 
just going all the way around. I don't want to do this little guy right here because this is going to be one of my leaves. I don't want to make the same mistake I made on the other one. Okay. I've still got a little yellow on my brush. Apparently I didn't rinse it off very good. And that's okay. Okay. I'm just going to rinse my brush to get that yellow out. And I'm going to go in with um, a, another layer of the red and purple paint. Right, I'm going to go over the ones that have already dried. Because if you go over wet paint with wet paint, it's just going to kind of smear. The only way you can do wet on wet is if you have a lot uh, loaded on your brush. That's the only way you can do wet on wet. Successfully, anyways. Okay. And we're close to being done here, guys. This is almost done. The flowers are a little bit tedious, but they're pretty easy. If you, as long as you get that general shape down. Okay. Let's see. So I'm just going over it again. Right. And I'll add then another layer of the red. And we're on we're almost done and then we'll add the highlights. Okay. So I'm going to rinse my brush really thoroughly because I'm going to go back over onto the yellowish orange color there. I'm sorry for hitting the camera, guys. Um, but I'm going to go back over that orangish yellow because it's pretty much dry now. I definitely had to make sure it was dry before I before I went over it with a second coat. Okay, and I'm just going to... I don't need to do anything crazy. I'm not going to mix any colors with it. I'm just going to do this because it's such a beautiful color. And so, so guys, I don't know if anybody's ever watched me for any length of time uh, and seen the stuff that I do. You guys will know that I do both kinds of artwork. I do like fun, whimsical stuff like this, and then I also do um, more of a fine art. I love fine art, but it's so tedious um, that it's not really something I can do every day and share with you guys. Um, and sometimes I just want to do something quick and fun. So that's where this really comes in. Um, if you love fine art, um, you're in the, you're in a good place. Um, and if you love whimsical art, you're in a good place. Because um, I try to sometimes mix a combination of the two. Like a lot of times, you know, we could just do an easy silhouette, uh, you know, palm tree. But we tried to make it look a little bit more realistic in a quick manner. All right, so. And we could even maybe add in some green there if we wanted to. It would have been better to do it um, while the paint was still wet. But we could do it if we wanted to. Alright, so I'm just almost done with this yellow here. And then we'll do the green on our leaves and then we'll do the highlights. Don't forget, if you do this painting or anything similar, send me a picture. I would love to see. All right. Oh, I got to do a little bit more in the stamen. Okay. 
We'll do the dots in a minute. I'll show you how to do the dots around the stamen because um, that's pretty easy. Um, but we'll do the leaves. So I'm just going to get some of that green and I'll even go over it a little bit in a little bit with some light green as a highlight. But I'm just going to follow it around just like I did with the flowers. And if I don't get it all, that's okay. If I have a little bit of white around the edges, that's okay. It'll look It'll look like a highlight. Okay. Okay, and if it looks a little streaky, remember some colors are transparent, a little bit transparent, so we'll go in in a second with, you know, once it dries with that second layer or with another color to add a highlight. But sometimes it's alright because sometimes it's a natural highlight. Sometimes you want the streak streakiness and sometimes you don't. And as you can see this green covered the yellow right up. I'll get a little bit in here. Okay. Let's see. Now we can go in uh, with another with another paintbrush, um, any paintbrush actually, and we'll add the little dots. Um, so I'm just going to use the point of my paintbrush and I'm just going to do just I'm just dabbing it in my paint and then dabbing it around just to kind of give it that look like there might be a little loose pollen or whatever might be on the edge Alright, and we're just, just giving it some character and some fun. Alright, so I'm going to wipe that off. Alright, and I'll do the same thing with that pink and purple. Alright, I'm just adding some dots just at the end. And I actually think that my flower might need another coat because it's it's still a little streaky. So some paint is like that. Some paint is more streaky than others. Um, but I'll go in with a light green on top of on top of these um, leaves first while we're waiting for this flower to dry. All right, and I'm just going to add in a little bit of light green. And I'm not completely blending it all together. I'm just going to let it look like more like a highlight than anything. I might even add in some of that light green to the palms. Not a lot. Maybe just a little bit where the sun might be hitting. Just to add more of a dimension to it. Okay. Just to add a little bit of dimension. And this is just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look, guys. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. All right, but this is giving us some contrast because we have some lights and some darks. Okay. All 
and let's see even add a little bit of that in here we don't even need to add white if we don't want to to this tree you can if you want to just gonna add just a little bit more Okay. And I could use any color for the base of the tree. It doesn't have to be green. I could use a brown or a tan. Um, I just had the green on my brush, so that's why I used that. Okay, so I'm rinsing my brush a little bit. And I'll go in with some white now on the tree. I'm still waiting for this flower to dry so I can add some to it. Let me, actually let me add some green to my grass. All right, I'm not gonna use a lot. I'm just gonna go in and, you know, right on top so it's not gonna be super bold. It's just gonna give it a little bit of color. And I can even go like a little bit above this black I'm just putting very little on my brush, just mostly, and I'm, I'm like, I put it in my paint and I'm just, I flattened it out just to give it the illusion uh, that it's, that it's there. I don't have to do a lot. You know, and I can do different amounts if I wanted to. I could go up really high with it, or I could just, just add a little bit in the black here. Okay. And this will, again, just make it, it's just to make it look like a little bit more realistic. So there's not such harsh edges. Okay. And I can go in and add little ones here and there. I don't want to do a lot at the bottom because I don't want to wash out some of the things that I've already done. All right, but let's see. I'm going to rinse that out. And now I'll add the white highlights on the palm tree. I really like the way that green looks on there. It'll look even better when it's dry. All right, so I'm not using a lot, so I'm just I'm putting it my paintbrush in it and I'm just kind of making my brush really flat cuz I don't want there to be too much white. Again, you do need to have some highlight. Um and this also when you flatten out your brush, um it helps to make it like a really thin fine line. So you see how I got that fine line there? It just helps to uh, make thinner lines if you don't want to use your fine liner brush. Sometimes fine liner brushes are not as good as flat brushes depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, and we don't want to apply a lot of pressure because we're just trying to go for some thin lines. If your brush gets too dry, just dip it in a little bit of water and flatten it back out. Okay, and we're just going through and adding a little bit. These are just highlights of where the sun is hitting. Okay, we'll do a little bit down here near the green, not too much, a little bit on the edge. It's just going to make it stand out just a little bit more. Okay, we're almost done, guys. Okay, so I will even add a little bit in with this leaf. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of a highlight. Let's see. And then I will add some of my flowers, but I still want to... This flower is pretty much dry now, so I'm just going to go in with a little bit more of that color just so it doesn't look so streaky. And then we'll, there, that's looking so much better.
I'm just going in with a thin layer, quick thin layer, just to wash out that um, streakiness that was in there. Like I said, some things need extra extra layers, depending on the kind of paint you have or the color paint, and that's okay. But just always make sure that when you put extra layers on, you want your previous layers to be dry. They'll just go on a lot better if you do. All right. Okay, so I got that. The only thing I have left to do is just add a few highlights to my flowers and maybe even a little couple highlights in the grass. Now for this I'm going to use my fine liner brush because I'm going to want it to be very fine highlights. Alright, so we are almost done. Alright, but if you guys are watching on YouTube, I would love for you to... Um, to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It'll help my numbers and it'll also help me provide you with more uh, videos because I, you know, I need to know what you like in order to provide you with what you like. Also, sometimes if you subscribe, you'll get the notifications every time I post a video on YouTube. Sometimes Facebook is not the most reliable with notifications so it'll just give you a little bit more um, notification on that All right, and you can put the highlights wherever you think they should go they can be more on some leaves and petals than others Um, they can go on the edges or on the inside. And you can even blend it in a little bit with the color you have if you wanted to. Like if it's still wet, like my paint was a little bit wet right here, which I think is okay because it just adds a little bit more of a highlight. Makes it look cool. All right, we are pretty much done. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of a line here. And a little bit more of a line here. And then a little bit more of a line on this stamen. That way it stands out a little bit more. If your hand is not steady like mine, then you want to, like right now I'm resting my hand on the table. It just helps me stabilize my hand. And we'll just add, so I'm just, I'm going to just do a little tiny bit of um, white here. Very little. I don't want a lot. I'm just going to go. Not a lot, guys. Just a little bit. Because I don't want to overpower my black or my green. If you don't like it, you can go in with that baby wipe if you want. Too much white there. Okay. So, and we, my friends, are done. So I would love it if you guys could like and subscribe or like my page and follow on Facebook or however you want to. Um, share this video with a friend who also loves art. Uh, we don't want them to miss out on some fun stuff, some fun free stuff. Uh, and here you have it. Um, also, don't forget to sign if you're on doing a canvas or whatever you're doing. Make sure you sign. It was very fun to paint with you, and I will be painting again soon. Bye, guys.